Natalie Gobis was a great player to watch in the early 2000s as she made golf fun and relatable for female golfers of all ages. Even though it took some time for Gobis to win an event on the professional golf tours, she had a lot of fans on her side. Everyone was ready for her to make an impact and win an event, and she proved that she was capable of that. After years of playing in the LPGA Tour, Gobis decided to retire in 2020. Although she is still very much involved in the golf world, she is no longer an active player on the LPGA Tour. However, there are several reasons behind her retirement. What are they? I'm sure you will ask that, so watch on as we answer that question for you. Although Gobis was able to pull off only a win on the LPGA Tour, she was certainly able to make a living. Two states in the U.S. can make a golf career and scholarship quite a bit easier. Those two states are California and Florida. Natalie Gobis was lucky to have been born in Sacramento, California, which is the prime location for someone who wanted to work on their golf game all life long. She started finding interest in the game at age 4. By the time she reached age 7, she had won her first tournament, and at age 10, she was breaking par. Gobis was on a fast track to a successful career in golf. The exciting thing about her is that she is not from a wealthy home. Many wealthy young people become golfers because they were provided with the necessary equipment and amenities, such as growing up at private country clubs where they get to play golf every week in perfect conditions. However, this was not the case for Golbis. She was able to master the game and lowering her scores was financial freedom. She played her first LPGA Tour event in 1997 as an amateur at the age of 14. She was the top player on the boys' golf team at Granite Bay High School. She played in the boys' team because there wasn't a girls' team in the school. In addition, she wanted a competitive environment, which she experienced with the team and graduated at 16. When Gobis got her scholarship from Arizona State University, everyone saw a great college career work for her. Arizona State University is known for having a very strong golf program for both men and women. Lorena Ochoa, who also went on to become a very accomplished player, was on her team. Everyone who believed Natalie would spend four years at the school was surprised when she left after just a season. At the time, she was 18 years old and she was ready to make some money in the game. As we said earlier, she isn't from a wealthy family, but she knew her parents needed help when it came to paying for expenses related to her golf game. When she decided this, she quickly made a huge impact on the LPGA qualifying tour. She was able to qualify and placed third and earned her card for the 2002 LPGA Tour for her first time in the tournament. Although she was young then, she had certainly done enough in her career to make it to that level of golf and be ready to compete with the professionals. Her aim wasn't for money alone but also to win tour events. Even though she was not able to win the event, she did have some good finishes and started to make a living out on the tour. Although Gobis did not win a tournament until her sixth season on the tour, she finished sixth on the LPGA money list in her fourth season for over $1 million in earnings in 2005. She placed in the top 10 in four consecutive major championships from the 2005 LPGA Championship in the 2006 Kraft Nabisco Championship. Her first professional win came at the July 2007 Evian Masters in France, where she defeated Zhang Zhang, a South Korean, in a playoff. Golbis tapped in for a two-putt birdie on the first extra hole to claim the winner's prize at $450,000. Everyone who knows Golbis and desired her to win was thrilled to see her pull it off at this event. After the years 2005, 2006, and 2007, which were her best years when finished top 10 in major championships, her top finishes and high placements in every event started to fade a bit. Although this was unfortunate for the golf world to see, there are some reasons behind the performance. One of the reasons for her low performance is injury. There was no question about the fact that Golbis has always been a player to go after the ball. She never wanted to be one of those golfers who struggled with swing speed or distance. When you watch her swing, you can see how much effort and strength she puts into her shots. Unfortunately, all of this power, speed, and energy eventually led to some back injuries. Through the years, she has had to deal with six major surgeries, and they have certainly set her back a bit. In addition, she admitted to not listening to doctor's advice, especially after surgery. She is a golfer who likes to practice and play a lot. Some golfers will have to force themselves to work on their game, but Golbis was a person you would have to pull off the range. She would spend countless hours practicing, thinking, and improving before she was able to feel confident in a tournament. After back surgery, she was told to spend only half hour on the range, but she would spend all day. 
This, of course, led to more injuries, and eventually, she was just doing more harm than good. Now, as an older adult, she can recognize that the decision then was a poor one, and it probably hurt her career. However, that is the decision she has to live with. Also, during the HSBC Women's Championship Tournament in Singapore in late February 2013, Gobus contracted malaria, which made her miss a tournament while recovering. Now she claims that her back feels really good and that she experiences less pain when she swings. However, her capabilities in golf are not what they once were. Golbus was always seen as a sex symbol in the LPGA. She released a 2005 calendar just before the 2004 US Women's Open, which features her not only playing golf, but also striking poses in swimwear, leaving her almost naked. The United States Golf Association, USGA, barred it from being sold at the event, deeming it inappropriate. However, the calendar was sold at Golf Canada, thereby criticizing the USGA for overreacting. Golbus also posed for the November 14th issue of the magazine FHM, an issue that also gave away a chance to play golf with her at her home course, Lake Las Vegas Resort, where her calendar photo shoot took place. Golbus has said she likes the attention she gets. Even if not for her appearance, she has endorsement deals with TaylorMade Adidas, McGladry LLP, Canon, Michelob Ultra, Sky Caddy, Payment Data Systems, MasterCard, Win Golf Grips, Lake Las Vegas Resort, Purecell, Lexus, and EA Sports. What a massive endorsement deal for a sportswoman! Back in 2006, Golpa started writing a monthly advice column in FHM. In November 2005, a reality television show called The Natalie Golbus Show made its debut on the Golf Channel. The show had its second season premiere on October 18, 2006. Golbus has also appeared on the 2007 version of Tiger Woods PGA Tour by EA Sports, along with fellow professionals Annika Sorenstam, Ian Poulter, Luke Donald, and others. Golbus appeared on the August-September cover of Sacktown Magazine in August 2007 in an article that profiled the rising star's busy life of product endorsement and photo shoots, although she hasn't won any championship yet. Gil Ozier, vice president of marketing for Raymond Wheel, a luxury watchmaker and one of Golbus's endorsement deals, said then that once she started winning, she will be a megastar and Golbus proved that with her first win a few days later. In 2009, she appeared in the second season of The Celebrity Apprentice. Throughout the season, each celebrity raised money for a charity of their choice. Golbus selected the Boys and Girls Club and was fired from the show later on. So Natalie, you're fired. Okay. I'm sorry, thank you. Golbus also appeared on the April 2009 episode of The Price is Right as a showcase theme. She also participated in a playing hole-in-one to perform the game's inspirational putt. In 2010, she appeared in the 10th season of CSI, crime scene investigation in the 12th episode, Long Ball. In the 2012 Sports Illustrated Swim issue, she wore only body paint in her appearance. Despite the criticism from the USGA, Golbus didn't regret her decision one bit. She mentioned the fact that her business made her money, which she is using to live now. In the year 2020, Natalie Golbus announced that she would retire. She planned to play out the season and had high hopes for what the final season could bring. It turned out a bit of an odd one with the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic coming into play, but it still was the last one. She had decided to make this decision because her body is not capable of what it once was from a golf perspective. In addition, she acknowledged the fact that the game had changed and the girls who play today are better than they have ever been. Her decision to retire doesn't mean that she will no longer be active in the game of golf. She still plans on promoting and encouraging the game for those who are interested in getting better. In addition, she loves getting young girls involved in golf and showing them what an opportunity it can be. There is no question that golf will always be a part of life for Golbus, but just not in the same capacity that it once was. She is a golfer who wants to compete and win, and when she can't do that anymore, the game gets a bit frustrating. Sometimes retired players do come out and play in an event or two, but do you think Golbus can come out and play again, or her days as a player are completely over? Let us know your opinion in the comments box. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get more videos like this, and also click the notification icon to keep updated about our new videos. Thanks!